Hello everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Lost in Translation 1. This time we're covering Digimon Adventure colon 2020, episode 40, Strike the Killer Shot. I'm May, and I'm joined by the lovely Quinn. Hi. And Evie can't make it, but she has sent her thoughts through. But we are joined by the equally lovely Chloe, or Chloe, as we call her. Hello. And uh, I, I was I was lazy. I already made the image, and I will not be uh, adding in Cutemon slash Tutemon for Chloe <laughs> uh, for the logo. But she is here, and she is with us. Mm. But I am just lazy and can't be bothered uploading the logo again because I decided to do it early for once, and I was like, oh, <laughs> probably shouldn't have done that. But no, it, so it, it hit me. But anyway, uh, obviously there was no uh, adventure episode last week because I want to say there was a sporting event in Japan. Something, yeah. I, I know it was a planned thing, but I'm glad it was not. Yeah. What I briefly thought was, oh, good, COVID just shut us down for an indeterminate amount of time. No. Like, I knew Which that there was a week off, but I, but I forgot that there was a week off, so I was kind of surprised when I was like, oh, there, there's no Digimon. But yes, we're back this time. So that's exciting, and it I guess out with that, I was really glad for the extra sleep last week. Yeah, me too. I was just like, I, I didn't hate the break. I mean, I, I released an episode anyway, which we just talked about some news, like uh, the the key art, which we won't be talking about much because I guess there are some spots in the image, but it's interesting. It, it exists. Yeah, it's, yeah, it is interesting. And obviously, if you wanted to hear my thoughts on it, just my thoughts, because it was just me. So if you just want to hear my thoughts on it, uh, last week's episode. But also I did a, it was a video one. But anyway, let's uh, move on to the show. The episode starts with Agumon and Gavumon playing soccer with a coconut or something, and they're not very good. And then we see Taichi and Sora playing, and we find out they're both very good, and they seem to have some pretty good teamwork between them. Then Tentumon tackles Sora, and then he kind of just thinks it's odd that they can't attack in soccer, so that's it's kind of cute. <laughs> and then Gavumon says that soccer is hard, and Agumon says the ball is their friend. <laughs> also, Which is... wow, playing with a coconut sounds difficult and bad. How do they not, like, burst it open? Like They would break their foot so many times. Yeah, like... But with the Digimon, Sora they have, like... just really be hurt. Yeah, I'm pretty sure someone... Does someone headbutt some it at some point? I feel like they should have. Yeah, Agumon does a headbutt and it just vaguely, you know, hurts for a second. Yeah, Which, it's... okay, that's, that's I think Agumon. it must... I think it must be like a digital world coconut, which has different physics, which is the only way I can explain why it can be used as a soccer ball. Mm -hmm. But it, it happens. So we find out that the others are relaxing. Mimi and Palmon has a leaf of thrones again. They're both on their, le their, throne, le their leaf throne things, which is great. I'm really glad that we have those again. I love that clearly Palmon can just make all this stuff for, for Mimi to hang out on. I kind of adore that. And they have like little cups out, which is kind of a nice little throwback. And also, it's good stuff. I, think the, I think the writers just really like Mimi. I'm just getting this impression constantly. Well, I mean, same. And, and good for them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah me, me too. Then this the group of characters talk about how the only reason they have a whistle is because Joe brought it in case he encounters a bear in a mountain, which I guess this is just Joe's grinder journey, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what... It, I don't have to deal with bears because I live in Australia and because I'm it's not fair. on grinder. I made the joke. That's, that's the same <laughs> joke twice. Um, but I, I don't think... A whistle would help me from a bear? Um, so I can't recall. I think the idea is just that it's a loud noise that might scare them, which seems, you know, reasonable enough. I'd be worried that it would summon them. Yeah. Like, I don't want to have a bear summoning whistle. Anyway, before I make the, the same joke three times, we'll <laughs> move on. So Koshiro mentions how good Sora and Taichi's teamwork is, and then we have Tailmon who appears to be watching out for danger. Which is kind of a nice sort of thing. She's just like allowing them to have a little bit of filler as a treat, but she's watching nice out for plot. But she's not Plotmon. Anyway, so I adore that TK and Hikari just spend this episode just making like a little flower crown for Patamon, and that's basically all they do. I don't think either I, of them have lines. I, no, at one point I, I was going to ask if uh, if Takaru appeared in this episode, and apparently yes. Yes, yeah, Hik Hikari and Takaru do the appear. The B-plot in this was... There wasn't really. it, Why was it point, there? I mean, it, it, was, it was there long enough to establish that oh, <laughs> some people just didn't go with for no reason. 
and they, that was yeah, it. They argued about a fridge. Did yeah? Did they yeah. ever even open the fridge? No. No. Yeah. I think we're maybe setting that up for next week, which is, so if bizarre. so, kind of amazing. Does a digimental come out? I don't know. Oh my what, God, what is in please. the fridge? And then oh, Tika's like, you know "Oh, we." I, I think we just got a. a what movie am I thinking of? Uh, Pulp Fiction it, and they open it and it glows, and then that's it. Oh yes. I spent the whole movie really hoping that I found out what's in that suitcase, but <laughs> I didn't. But I wish I did. But I think that's a, that, that's definitely the point. But yeah, what about this fridge? The the real fridge contents are the friends that we made along the way. There, uh, there. there we are. I did it. I made. I got there. Anyway, so suddenly there's a rumbling and a raising landmass that just floats above, and for a second I'm just like, oh, it's El Dorademon. Nope, it's just literally a floating landmass because that happens in the digital world now. Well, I guess it did in the floating continent from this earlier in the show. It just happens, whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, suddenly these bombs are shot out at the children, and Joe is the only one to point out that they should run. Like, nobody, everyone else is just sort of staring, and Joe's like, oh, we should run, and no one runs. No one even thinks about it. <laughs> it's just really on, like, it is so, like, in character for Joe to be the only one who suggests, hey, th- this is scary. We should definitely consider doing a run. Anyway, so the bomb hits, and everyone is fine, and Agumon says it smells good, and we find out that the meteor bomb is actually a fruit, and Sora wonders if they can get more from the floating land. Then Biomon evolves, and Taichi and Agumon head off on Bergamon along with Sora, and it's, it's, they are separating again, but I guess kind like, of, it's, it's like, okay. It's a pretty flimsy justification, and I was fine with it, but I thought the B-plot was going to not just kind of literally stop. I think it would have been better if it was just, if we didn't get a B-plot, if we just didn't revisit what the other kids were doing, because yeah. if they were just sitting around. Or, d- it, or come it, back to it in the last five seconds with the refrigerator showing up. That could have been wild, yeah. and, and at least sets up, oh, hey, here's what we're doing next week. Which is, I think, what the goal here was, but it was so poorly yeah. executed. Oh, look, I hope it's setting up something, because that just makes that part worse. But, I mean, I know we've always said, oh, it's really nice how even though we get characters who are the focus of an episode, we still look at, like, we get to see what the other characters are doing. In this circumstance, just, like, they're kind of just arguing about, like, whether they should open the fridge or not, and then they argue about what type of fruit juice is the best. It's just kind of a little bit weird like it breaks it, it they're very short like updates so like f- like five seconds of the other group and then we jump it's back what to what we the, used to do episode. with oh by the way the real world is still in trouble yeah but it's about a fridge like they could have just compiled all that all the activity with the other kids to yeah as you said one segment at the end or just before the end or or just as the other kids leave i don't know it, it felt weird and it broke it almost broke up the action a little bit too much i don't know it's it, it was it felt weird anyway so then the fridge shows up and that we quickly we the fridge shows up and then we quickly jump to whatever Sora and Taichi's doing so we have Sora being in a good mood because of soccer and she has basically more emotion than she's ever had in the entire show so it kind of makes me feel bad like has she just been like really yeah, so- depressed the whole time and now she has endorphins she feels Actually, I was, happy say, I, was, I was briefly like super into this episode because Sora starts getting a character and it feels good. Yeah, and, and also the implication is just like she didn't have a character because she was depressed, or at least that's how I read that I, scene. I guess, like she's I mean, she's able to play soccer now and she got some endorphins and now she's feeling good. And I was kind of like, oh, I feel I feel bad for Sora. I'm sort just... of here for it, but also like this is now the third character we're coming up with an explanation for why they didn't have a personality for forty episodes. Except for Mimi, who's always had a personality, and her personality is queen. It's true. Mm. They had the budget for exactly one personality, and they spent it well, but you know. Joe has had a personality. Occasionally. And Koshiro. Uh, he like, reads the news. Yeah, but in the episode where he was just like, oh, I can't use my iPad for updates. Well, how am I going to be smart without my updates from the internet? And then he realizes he was smart the whole time. Like, I kind of, yeah, but I was definitely he here for that. just reading updates from the internet. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. That's kind of like, <laughs> he just forgot the lesson that he learned. Which is like, a lot of episodes just like, we've... We gradually just forget the lesson that we learned that caused us to evolve so we can have the exact same realization when we evolve again. Uh-huh. It's weird. But that is also Digimon, to be fair. Like, 
they will have a yeah. character when they evolve, and then they won't have a character until they evolve again. And that's just, just and as I said, that's all of Digimon. For 25 years, I expected them to have gotten better at it. Yeah. Well, they did Atmon. Atmon's that's good. true. I want more, it. like, more... I don't want a sequel to Atmon because I want it to just leave that as is, just leave that good. Yeah, but I would like if more they're like gonna Atmon. do a sequel, I might, like... Of the available options, it's Tamers or Atmon. Or well, Frontier got, like, if you wanted to go real, real wild with it. I want a Frontier reboot. I know I've said that a bunch, but like I feel like Frontier uh, I mean, could to deserve, this episode, like, could do well. Which was also part of the Frontier reboot. Yeah, there's like, every so often we have an episode where just, it feels like, like, this season feels the most like Frontier than any other season, which is... Unusual, I because they don't turn into Digimon thought, in this one. Uh, the, the, the bad guy from this episode was going to be Petaldramon for a minute. Yeah, he does, he does look like... Tropiamon does look like Petaldramon, and Petaldramon is, again... I know I've me- I mention this every time I can mention Petaldramon. But Petaldramon is the best Digimon I have yeah. ever seen in my life. Don't tell Edramon. Just Although, because... I don't know. He, he is Woodmon a f- and the weird advice, always brush your teeth. My, oh, uh, yeah, Arbamon, yeah. Might be mine. And it stays with Petaldramon. Arbamon. Because Petal, yeah, but Petaldramon eats the burger and then he falls asleep and then when he wakes up he feels bad and then his advice is if you're going to eat don't sleep straight afterwards and I'm just like oh, that's what I've been doing it's wrong. Pretty good advice. I love Pet. I love Petaldramon. Like that was and also that was probably the best episode of Frontier with the Petaldramon. Anyway, we're talking oh about God. Frontier. So yep. Instead of this episode, anyway, so. We get to see a new Digimon, and it's Pomumon. So this Digimon just basically was released in a virtual pet. Yeah, you can talk about virtual pets again, uh, which actually came out like the uh, like the other day, like the seventeenth of March, so four days ago. So this is a brand new release. This Digimon is a brand new Digimon. We saw it before when in like promotional art for this virtual pet, but it just came out the other day. It's a Wind Guardian, yay, and it's also a Dragon Fruit. Which is cute design. Love, love it so much. Love, love okay, it more so than anything this else. This is the point it's so in the cute. show at which Agumon reveals he is pretty okay with having done Vor. Yeah. Well, everyone's really okay so. with doing Vor. Yeah, but like we've seen, we've seen you know evil people Vor to evolve. But Agumon was just like, wow, that tastes good. Look, let's go get more. And I acknowledged, oh, yep. so that fruit that I ate, and then just no one says anything, and it's it's yeah. pretty uncomfortable. I it would was, like to point bizarre. out that the end of the episode has them flying off with fruit, and I'm just yeah. like, oh, wow, I really hope I that those aren't that. people. It's uncomfortable. Yeah, they use a coconut. The, yeah. the children being implicated in this vor is just. I don't. I don't know about it. Yep, I'm. I'm pretty less than okay with them for flying off with definitely former people as a food source. I mean, unless they just they could just be normal fruit, but I wouldn't be taking any fruit from this floating island uh-huh. in the sky on the basis of what if they used to be people? Like, what what if we just ate Jedi? What if we just ate, hey, um, Lotmon comes along like, oh, I actually Jedi discovered another li- uh, the holy Digimon. Yeah, well, yeah, Jedi did. But what if Lotmon just comes along and says, oh, we found another holy Digimon uh, currently Oops. inside Taichi's stomach. Yep. Whoopsie. Like, you can't vor the holy Digimon. Like, what if you just ate, like, a Zulonglon or something? Like, whoopsies. <laughs> like, it's made me not want to eat, like, fruit. I mean, obviously I don't have this worry, but... Like, I feel bad enough if you eat an apple and all of a sudden, like, you look at so the apple and there's, like, a worm a kid, in it. When my mom didn't want me to eat this, like, really expensive Swiss cheese that she bought. <laughs> so she told me that yeah. the, the, the holes in Swiss cheese were from where uh, maggots were involved in the creation uh. process. I was like, what the f- <laughs> I didn't eat Swiss cheese for, like, ten years. I'm impressed but there is a type of cheese Swiss that- cheese now after that. <laughs> I was, but like, six. There is a t- I just assumed- like, a lot of cheese anyway. is, like, made in really gross ways. Like, you don't want to learn about how exactly. things... Exactly! Like, it made perfect You never sense. want to learn how food is made. Like, mm-hmm. like uh, dates kill disgusting. wasps and stuff. Like, food is gross. Don't look into how any food is made. Like, I didn't know until I was a vegetarian uh, that parmesan cheese just contains, like, animal yeah. parts. Like, Ew. nah, good thanks. None of that. None of that ever again. Like, it just, yeah. Yeah, things are gross, but these kids are definitely committing war on Digimon in this episode. I mean, they do at the start, so... Uh-huh. And, and they fly off with, with more vor for later. 
Yeah, like a little Vora's a treat. But also the other... The, Taichi and Sora didn't let the other kids know, hey, don't eat that fruit. That's so right. never brought it up. Oh, gosh. The, the fruit that arrived, like the meteor bomb thing, the other kids probably just ate. Oh, no. Like, this... How many episodes in this season have somewhat like i mean i know digimon have always been like okay they kind of fight to survive survival the fittest whatever they eat they, they're, they're real animals they eat to survive sort of thing but i feel like this season has really turned it up to 11 where it's like the plot of most episodes is just like digimon gotta eat like last episode was a little bit weird like potamon is potato but is also eating potato then we had the the M- Mimi's episode where the rock Digimon was eating the other the smaller rock Digimon we're just like eating eating Digimon every week now mm-hmm. like what what it, it I'm just kind of like this is it was a joke at the start but now it's just like oh how are we gonna find out which Digimon we can eat this time it's just yeah, weird so, like I said they're really leaning heavily into the the evolution idea and I'm sort of here for it except we haven't developed that into anything more than look at all the vor in 40 episodes yeah like none of the Digimon evolved because of eating they just ate because they felt like turning these Digimon into fruit and eating them, or at least was, harvesting uh, them or keeping them there. This episode really, it's, for it all that it was an okay episode, it really drives home for me how much it feels like the plot just started. Yeah, it very much just like 20 episodes of this you could just skip. Like, sure, there was plot, there were episodes, but despite None most of it, of it not being filler, yeah. Which is weird because it was all, it was like in Frontier how we don't have any real, like, we have like maybe one or a half of a filler episode in all of Frontier, but a lot of it doesn't even matter. And it's the same with this season. It's just like, yeah, it's not filler, but I don't care. Yeah. I mean, like, and clearly the writers didn't either, which is why they're just like, oh, right, we should invent a reason why Sora didn't talk yeah, it's not... for 40 episodes. I guess she missed soccer. Yeah. You know, you like, know what it's weird that we, we really bought... should have done as a callback? When Sora needed to cut all the fruits to save people's lives, she should have brought out the her knife. trusty knife. Yes. She was a knife why lesbian. Why didn't she? <laughs> yeah, but... The thing is, we haven't had, like, I don't think since maybe the first episode where Taichi mentioned how they how he knew Sora, and I think Taichi's mother remembering that another character exists, and she, he was like, she, she recognised Sora or something. We haven't really known that Sora and Taichi used to play soccer together or anything, or that she likes soccer even, really. Yeah, like, I feel the like these flashbacks could have been played establishing earlier. establishing that they were friends. Yeah, and really, like, giving us flashbacks. And that they were friends from an early age. Like, they are maybe even younger than Hikari and Takaru in in those flashbacks. They look like maybe they're six or seven. So I feel like those flashbacks could have been... Could have worked really well if we had them earlier in the show as well as this episode because it's almost like we're developing a character or that Sora has a character. But yeah, a- anyway, back to the plot. So we have suddenly some random lasers attacking and Pomon says it's Thropiamon's Venom and it's another new Digimon from the newly released Pendulum Z that came out the other week, which is, well, last week rather, which is super exciting. It's nice to see these new Digimon. It's just nice to see them d- have designs from old Digimon as well as new Digimon and also I really like Winter Guardians. They're great. And also it's a dinosaur plant friend. I love, I love. Did not realise that Thropiamon was so big though. But I'm very excited. We see that Flymon drop the Pomamon into the tropical pitcher-esque plant things and then they get eaten. And then this sprouts a fruit which the children were wanting to eat earlier. <laughs> and we just learn that this whole thing is just war again. Uh-huh. Meanwhile, the other children are debating what to do with the fridge. And then we immediately go back to Taichi and Sora. Like, we have, like, the kids discussing something, and then we just go back to the other plot, which happens so, a lot. So I'll be honest, when when the island first appeared, I thought we were just bringing back Eldoradimon and Leomon, and I was going to be like, wow, that was impressive. And then, no, apparently there are just more yeah. floating islands around. Yeah, me too. I, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, it's just Eldoradimon. <laughs> but it's not. It's just a just it's floating landmass that happens. Yeah, and I'm just like, I, they definitely died. Like, mm-hmm. I can't see how they wouldn't die from they that. They are standing in the crater from where the refrigerator landed. It should have killed them so much. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
Well, and uh, I love then, how yep. the uh, fruit falling created a big old crater that just conveniently stopped right at their feet. Um, but then they were standing in the crater when the much larger refrigerator fell, and the refrigerator just kind of got wedged in there gently. Yep. Without any yeah, crater it just, creation. Or anything. It, the fruit was even fine. Yeah. yeah. It landed in a beautiful way that it didn't create. It just sort of landed perfectly wedged in the no other For crater. For sure, it told me created. a lot about the physics of how the ISS would fall out of the sky, they stopped caring about physics. Mm. Yeah. Well, they, they stopped caring about physics quite a lot in this series. Sometimes they, they explain it away in a way that I'm just kind of like, okay, whatever. That's fine. Alicia explained it. And other times, just like the Eldoradium on Falling from the Sky episode, where we're just falling for the half an hour and just sort of hanging out. Matt's hair doesn't even move. Tai Chi's does, but Matt's doesn't. And then we have Metal Marmimon that are metal, but also balloons or something. I don't know. Anyway, so we're back to Tai Chi and Sora, and we learn that the Pomon were all living here peacefully, and then the Flymon and Tropiamon showed up and began turning them into fruits and committing Digivore. And then Pomon says that she wants to save everyone and take the jungle back, and Sora says that she will help. Beomon evolves to Bergamon, and Agumon evolves to Greymon, and then to Metal Greymon because he needs to fly, I guess. Then back to the fridge. The other children are now arguing about juice, and Koshiro is talking while everyone else ignores and talks over him. And then we go back to the other characters. It's constant, just back and forth. It's, we have them for five seconds, and they're all back to, back to the other characters. So Bergamon and Metal Greymon fight with Tropiamon, who I just, I love Tropiamon so much, and I love Pomamon. I'm honestly just... I love Pomamon, but I'm still cheering for the bad guy just because I love to see Tropiamon just yeah, just really pretty. I love this pretty fruit dragon dinosaur friend. I I love so much. Anyway, so Metal Greymon gets hit and he falls into the tropical pitches, and so does Tai Chi. And he sprouts into a Metal Greymon shaped fruit, which is oddly adorable. And then Tai Chi also becomes a fruit because I guess he wanted to be bored for the second time in this season. It just keeps on happening. Mm-hmm. Anyway. So Bergamon evolves to Garudamon because Tai Chi is going to be bored. And then Sora comes up with a plan to rescue Tai Chi. Pomamon tries to fly on her own and it's precious because she's not very good at it. And I will also die for Pomamon. Pomamon's so cute. Yeah. Then Garudamon is fighting. And then Pomamon falls and fails to fly while Sora is climbing. But Pomamon's still determined to save her friends. And then Flymon shows up and I just... I love watching Garudamon attack because it's just Shadow Wing and then she will just show Yukon the bad guy. It's just like, her attacks are just like magic powers but also fisticuffs. Mm-hmm. Which, I don't think we really had this in the original. I think it was just Shadow Wing and his big bird but no actual fighting. And I kind of I kind of love the hand-to-hand combat that we have from Garudamon. Mm-hmm. Pomamon flies away while Sora uses her whistle to distract Flymon. And then Pomon rescues another one, but they both say that flying is tough. It's adorable. And then Sora starts having flashbacks to when she was a kid playing soccer with Taichi, and Taichi got knocked over by another kid, but he never gave up. And Sora says that she shouldn't give up either. And then Garudamon, meanwhile, is also saying that Sora would never give up, so she shouldn't either. And then I don't know if we get like a shadow of Hoomon in this moment, because it just looks like her shadow wing. But it could also have a face in it that looked like the, the Phoenixmon face. I don't know. It's very cool, though. And then we have Flymon about to attack Sora, but the Pomamon gang up on the Flymon and defeat it, which is kind of cool. And then Sora rescues Taichi, and they are both able to rescue Metal Greymon. Taichi then passes a coconut, which I'm fairly certain at this point is another Digimon. And then he passes to Sora, who kicks it into the air. And then the Pomamon attack the coconut for some reason. They all attack Teropiamon. Which is weird, because I'm fairly certain Teropiamon is only a perfect level, but we need a bunch of child-level Digimon and two perfect-level Digimons to beat him or something? I don't know. And then everyone says that Sora is awesome, and we get nice pencil artwork finisher, which is really nice to see. I think we've only had it, like, maybe twice at this point, which I just... I wish that we had it more. It's just a really nice way to finish off an episode. And uh, we have all the character hol- ha- just holding fruit as they wave goodbye to Pomamon, which I'm just like, bye, we took some of your friends. Yeah, we're keeping Like, wh- why? Yeah, we, we have seen no evidence that these fruit can exist without a Digimon as input. Mm-hmm. Especially, like, maybe in the whole digital world, okay, that's fine. A fruit does exist that's normal, but... We have on this island, I think we've established. Yeah, this specific island, I'm fairly certain only like 
makes fruit from trees from Digimon that fall into the pitcher, the tropical pitcher fruit plants. It's just like these are also real, like obviously not the turning people into fruit thing, but those pi- those tropical pitcher plants are real plants. They're called tropical pitchers, or they have an actual long name which I can't pronounce. An orc, I can't remember what it's called. But they're super cool. They're just another sort of like Venus flytrap kind of thing, but it's just basically a big like uh, hole that you kind of fall in and you go nom, kind of noms, you kind of like has the the acid. Super cool. Doesn't turn you into a fruit. Is not this big, but I mean they they can exist to be pretty big, but not not like not like huge enough to like just completely devour a metal Greymon. Anyway, so that's pretty cool. They definitely took away some Digimon at the end of the episode, though. Yep. And yep. then as we get the encyclopedia. Yep. As a little, a little we had to commit a little vor as a treat. So then in the Digimon Encyclopedia we learn about Marine Angemon and I'm actually kinda of disappointed by what Koshiro says because Koshiro just wonders what the Holy Ring is and says he'll ask Marine Angemon about it and I you honestly have expected him Tailmon's right there. Yeah, also yeah, Tailmon has one. But also I I wanted him and I also just not, was 90% sure that he was just going to say, I'm going to talk to Kabutomon about why he doesn't have one. I don't know, something just like that. like why, Or, or Kabutomon saying, I wish I had a holy ring, or something like that. I don't know, it just, it felt, it, I don't know, it didn't feel as good as the other ones because we didn't mention Kabutomon. But also I just really love Kabutomon. Alright, now that we've discussed the synopsis, let's discuss the discussion. So what were our highlights for this episode? Sora got to have a personality. Yeah, she did. And I, I know that, like, you know, I can't, I can't just judge this episode judging by the entire season. And the entire season should have given her a personality before this. But if we just talk about this episode in a vacuum, it was kind of... I, I did almost appreciate it how... And this is just the way I understood it and just the implications that I got from it. But that Sora has been depressed throughout this season. And maybe I'm looking too into it. But because she did something she really liked which is soccer and she got some endorphins she's actually happy and the reason she's been kind of withdrawn and she looks kind of emotionalist for 40 episodes is because she was actually sad because you know she can't do what she loves or maybe she's just I mean, sad this without it problem predates going to the digital world to some extent but you will take it. Yeah, like I'll 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 take I'll just take it a little bit, just sort of like just because it makes it seem a little bit better. And yeah, I just I I didn't mind this episode. Uh, it was a lot better than I thought it was going to be because Sora episodes don't typically stand out that much. Like they're kind of in this season at least a little bit average because I don't think the writers particularly care about Sora no, because not at all. she doesn't have a character. She doesn't seem to have much emotion and. And I am, I'm willing to just accept that she was just depressed and that was why she seemed that way. And actually that makes it sound... They care I mean, about her so little sad. she's allowed to have a parent. Yeah, well, and that, that was another bit. We have a, a character. It wasn't much, but I will... I, I grasp at straws here. I will appreciate the tiniest bit of information that they gave me that she has a character and that's like her mum was strict and was seemed to be the only one who actually cared that her child disappeared for like a week. It it happened. Any anyway, uh, any other highlights? Uh, I like Pomimon and Tropiamon. Yeah, the new Digimon were were pretty sick. Um, what was the whistle about? Uh, the whistle was they used it for playing soccer, but it was actually Joe's bear whistle or something. And it also helped lure away the uh, the Limon. The yeah, Flymon. like it yeah. was it was a very Chekhov's whistle. But it never really did anything. It's also definitely not a soccer whistle. <laughs> yeah. And it's weird that it wasn't Hikari's whistle. Um, it kind of looked and almost sounded more like a dog whistle than anything else. Yeah, which, which sort of makes sense with what they did with it. But anyway, yeah. um, that's neither a highlight nor a low light. Just a weird thought that occurred to me. Mm-hmm. Uh... It might be dumb, but I did kind of like just watching them play soccer for a bit because I know very little about soccer, um, but a couple of my former roommates are super into it, uh, so I just get to like analyze how uh, supposedly poorly they're playing soccer and uh, try to feel smart about it, and it was fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, now like the soccer animation was cute, but they used a bunch of like accurate terminology in it, at least in the subtitles that we. Watched. Oh yeah, like. Uh, many Japanese people are super into soccer, so that doesn't surprise me at all. Fair enough. Uh, 
And it was also just really I... nice seeing the kids do something, like, kind of just have, looked like they were having fun. It was, that was, right? that was pleasant. Oh my god, Ikakuman as a goalie was maybe my favorite little thing. Uh, yes, okay. Oh yeah, absolutely. That is not really related to a highlight uh, that uh, branches into a different uh, intellectual property, but um, being able to see, uh, say, do you see how diesel this goalie is? Uh, <laughs> for the Neo Yokia reference was also excellent. Yep. Um, no, this was, was fine. Uh, I, my main, like, my highlight was this was a pretty okay episode. And my, my low light is I wish this were episode eight. Oh yeah, if this was episode even, like, yeah, in the first ten, this would have been a great sort of setup and introduction to her character because we haven't had a character for 40 yeah, episodes. Yeah, like, it would be a five and, and, at that point. Oh yeah, definitely. If this was just, like, if the episodes we've had to give them their evolution silhouette sort of thing and that's what i'll call them it has have been like you know the first chunk of episodes that we had like in the first 10 episodes where we're just like meeting the characters that would be pretty good except for mm-hmm. like saw uh, mimi's episode was pretty good like her introduction episode of her being a queen that that, that is fine you can keep that yeah. one i prefer that uh and i guess joe's was pretty okay too yeah uh, but even I, though but, i love the but on bottom average episode. i think you could cut a lot of them and like you know, even though Takaru sort of has a personality now, he still doesn't really have a personality most episodes. Hey, he made flower crowns for Padam on this episode. That is important. That's, true. That's fair. Um, so like, yeah, it, I don't know. that was cute. I'm glad, I'm glad we got glad something. I'm glad that Tailmon is. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we've got something too. I'm glad that Tailmon is still mentioning that there's plot happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tailmon like, is the only if, person if who still cares about the plot. It's one line an episode, but it's cute. Like it's like a. I mean, I know I've re- I call I often reference this, but it's like in episode like in the last chunk of episodes in of Atmon, we had like a filler episode where it was a crossover with Digimon with Agumon just showing up. Like mm-hmm. it was just turns out Digimon Adventure was just a mobile app in the Atmon universe, which was great. And yep. uh, we have uh, Ray, who's one of the characters, say, "Hey, don't we have like you know the big bad to fight?" And Haru just like. <laughs> Digimon, Digimon, Ogumon, 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 yay! It's adorable. Good stuff. And and I will always reference that just sort of like, oh, <laughs> we have someone pointing out that there's plot to have, and I think Ray just sort of leaves. I think Ray's just going to say, I'm going to go do some plot while y'all yep. have fun with your filler. Like, it's it's cute. But uh, yeah, I have like a, a, a few highlights, but yeah, it's mainly just I love the Digimon that show up. I like that we're actually giving Sora an almost personality. But yeah, you're right. A, a low light would be this episode could have been episode eight or in the first ten episodes, just as a bit of introduction. Because yeah. otherwise, it's forty episodes, and we now know something about Sora. Exactly, um, and that's that's my main issue. Is God, we spent a lot of the show doing things that no one wanted. Yeah. Uh, any? Do you want to move on to lowlights? Do we have any more? I, I actually don't I have guess that I many lowlights. Yeah, we sort of slipped into lowlights about ten minutes ago, and I guess that's fine. Any lowlights? I don't understand why um, why Sora had to kick a coconut at the, the big bad and then have it get uh, <laughs> blasted on by all of the little rapid seed things. It um, was a little much. Yeah, it was. But I, I'm, I just, like it, I'm just glad that they were part of something. I feel like it child outright attack a Digimon. Uh, but I haven't watched much Digimon, so that might not be that out of the ordinary. It happens, oh, but it definitely... this was the first time it's been in any way you know, useful. Huh. Um, occasionally mm. you'll see things like um, a character with a stick attacking a Digimon that's about to, you know, kill their partner or whatever, but mm, okay. or this is the what, first what is time very common... they're usually involved in the, the final attack, I think. Anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, w- w- it's it's common to have, like, maybe a baby Digimon, like, do a, bu- a bubble blow attack at the bad guy and do nothing. And that motivates, like, the main character to fight because the babies are fighting or it's, like, a poo monster Digimon who's fighting and they're like, hey, I'm motivated because Mm -hmm. someone really weak is still trying, so I should try too, and then there's an evolution and they win. And that's, like, a lot of episodes, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. It's, I would say, an average episode of Digimon. Um, Yeah, just, like, we get, the main character gets motivated by a weaker character or a strong character dying in the case of Leomon. Fair. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, the, the coconut soccer ball is still one of the weirder th- decisions they made this entire episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they, de- like, I don't know, I wish they kind of, like, somehow established that they weren't eating Digimon when they took the fruit away at the end. Sure do. 
But like, you know, that that's I'm going to assume they don't mean they are Digimon that they are eating right now. But the other kids definitely ate the Digimon because uh-huh. we they didn't see after the after the refrigerator dropped, we didn't see the other fruit anymore. I'm just assuming that they just eat that fruit. They ate that fruit. Yep. Yep. So I let Digimon. Basically, that was my thoughts the whole episode. So, are we ready to move on to favorite character? Sure. Um, mine was almost Pomemon, but I felt like I should give it to Sora because it was her episode. And... I feel like Sora earned it. She was definitely yeah. the best character this episode to me. Yeah, I which will... which is good because it was her episode. And Chloe, yeah. I, I will also ask you, and I will put it in a it also in a, its own column. Oh, sorry. If this is a spreadsheet thing you do, then don't. Let me throw you off or anything. No, but, I, I, was, um, I still want to put it down. I'll just chip this in regardless then, yeah. Uh, Chloe's, also, Chloe's chip in! Yeah, Woo. well, I, I don't even know if I really have enough material for a whole Chloe's chip in today, but... I'll it's a tiny chucky. Uh, yeah, Sora, Sora kind of killed it today, and I want to see her on the cover of FIFA 2020 and then implicated for tax fraud in 2023. That is you the best what? thing ever! That's, that's a really solid plan for Sora. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and now I will scroll up for Evie's evals. And uh, Evie chose Takaru because he did not care what's going on in the slightest. Because he was just making the flower crown, which uh, is valid. She? Oh, because yeah, he, he Takaru. Takaru. Okay, got Yeah. Okay, we can edit that. <laughs> Me dumb. And then... It it's okay, it's, it is late. And then uh, for rating, I probably gave it too high again because I just did... I just enjoyed this episode. I gave it a four. I like this episode. Yeah. Uh, Quinn, what are you giving it? I'm going to give it a three and a half. It was, it was good, but it could have been better. Yep, which is reasonable. And Chloe? Um, oh gosh. If I had to give it a score out of 10, I'd probably also be right around the 4 range. Like, it was fine. It, it's a, No, it's a score out of 5. Out of 5? Okay, I'd give it like maybe a 3 or something then. Okie dokie. And for Evie's evals, she has given it, uh, she said while watching it, it was around 3.5. But with more time to think, it is really just a 2. So Evie did not seem to enjoy this episode as much as I did, but it's fine. I just, I enjoy every episode probably more than I should. <laughs> and, uh, oh, Evie has, has also provided her overall notes, which I will read out before we move on to the ranking. So she says that Sora finally got an episode, yay! But then they went and made it about soccer. So it was just a cast off repeat of original adventures episode where Ty was a bad team player, only without any of the actual character development because Tai Chi is actually perfect this time. Best part of the episode is when Tai nearly got bored again by becoming fruit. If they're going to do a Sora episode making it about Tai Chi, it's not the way to do that, nor is it making it about her not giving up, because then it may, might as well be that a Tai Chi episode again. And yeah, that make, that's, a, that's a reasonable assessment. I also kind of was like, oh yeah, it is like uh, in the Skull Greymon episode where we have the backstory about them playing soccer, but Tai Chi doesn't pass. And in this one, it's like the opposite. It turns out Tai Chi always passes, and that's kind of like his thing. He he always, like, he's like the uh, the turnabout football player. I don't know. There's a, yeah, although a this, reference this brings there. up again the same thing of, okay, so we've already done all the character development that we did in Adventure and aren't really doing any new developments. So we've just kind no, of been not really. standing still. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, at least, I mean, I, I did like that at least Sora rescued Tai Chi. Like, Tai Chi was kind of yeah, ta- out ta- of action was, for a lot ta- of the episode. Was dead. Yeah. Which is why I liked the episode. But having said that, moving on to ranking, I put it, like, in the middle. I put it in, like... Yeah. Well, like, just the, the, the top part of the middle. So, like, I put it in 16th place. So, like, the top third just near the middle mark because I liked this episode but it was definitely okay it's not the yeah. best episode it's not the worst episode so it's definitely it, it is in my middle of the ranking and Quinn where are we putting this episode in your ranking let me see here so I think I'm gonna put it uh between 5 and 27 above to a new continent uh so between 5 and 27 so you have also basically put that in the middle which I feel like is a good yeah, spot it was a, for it was a it. solid so, fine nothing episode yeah so 21st place so yeah in the middle and then for Evie's evals she's put it uh, at 30, she says around 36th place between 19 and 25. 
So where am I? I'm looking at the overall. Uh, where is 19 and 25? I've gone blind. I should just look for third. Uh, yeah, between 19 and 25, I have found it, and that's why I'm clicking, clacking at the keyboard. And uh, yeah, so that's yeah, th 36 place. And then in terms of our overall ranking, it got a 9.5, which means that it's between episode 24 and 27, which I have now found, which puts it like in the in the bottom half of our uh, our overall ranking. It puts it in 28th place, and that is where it is. So, do we have any miscellaneous thoughts while I'm getting up our questions? I wish that this were not an above average episode. Yeah. I wish that I could watch an episode of Digimon Adventure Colon without uh having nipple lasers. Just yeah. one. Or like without yeah. without Vor. Like I feel like we've definitely done the whole Vor thing being we've done a the Vor thing. thing a lot. And then yeah, the Metal Greymon nipple lasers are a lot and then sometimes instead they are missiles with teeth. Yeah. Yeah. I I would actually kind of appreciate if Ty just went off and had some B plot while the other characters kind of got to do a thing. Like Yeah. Like if it was just I, I like should go off, do a B plot, get captured and then, you know, be out of action for an episode. Yeah. And just have other characters do a thing. But I did like I did like how Sora seemed to have a character, but again, it felt very much late in the show. Yeah. So I mean and again this was this was an amount of character that had this been, you know, her introduction or maybe her second real episode would have been great. And it is so too little too late because we're now we're introducing a character in episode 40. Yeah. And, and I'm, now I'm just thinking, like, how, how hard must it be to be vegan in the digital world? Because we know potatoes come from an animal. Yeah. Like... We know yeah. that now fruit is actually just eating a Digimon. Like, it's not just a Digimon product. It's made from Digimon. Like, how do you vegan in this world? I suspect that you kind of don't. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'd say even sand's not safe because, like, I'm sure I... some Digimon has died and become the dust and became the sand and then they eat the sand. I don't know, something like that. Okay, Mufasa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> something like that, yeah. <coughs> um... Now on to questions. So this is for episode 39, which feels like five years ago, but that's sort of the thing that's been happening since 2020. Just like, time doesn't happen, doesn't work anymore. So first up we have Sleek Emu 7, who says, kind of a boring episode. Then again, the series has way too much going on and th that it becomes boring. But this episode is a good type of boring. Hope the season gets a little bit better. Yeah, I hope so too. I also liked the potato episode. But yeah, it was boring-ish, but I still liked it. Next we have Rashik, who says that they love how the solution to the main problem of the episode was we can make things other than fries with potatoes. The moral of the episode is the same thing that they've been telling people since forever. Potatoes are the most versatile in the world. Yep, totally agree. You can do so many things with potato. Then they have a question, which is, where does the burger meat come from? They've never seen a digi cow. If there was, wouldn't it become data before you butcher it? In the original series, they ate fish that were clearly fish and not Digimon. What are they eating? Well, we just saw Digimon become fruit, so... You don't know. No, I'm no. assuming... Meat grows in the ground. Duh. Oh, yeah, that's right. Meat is vegan. That's how you become vegan. I forgot that... Yeah, in Digimon world... Hamburgers. Yeah, if you are a vegan in the digital world, you can only eat meat. Because it it just grows in the ground. Yeah. Thanks, this Digimon. This makes me want to flip off guard and walk slowly backwards into hell. You mean Igasil? As Igazil. a vegetarian, sure. Yeah. Or homeostasis. Why would you maintain this? Yeah. Next we have Christopher who says, For a burger and fries episode dealing with Joe, this was an very entertaining seeing the group finally have some time to relax and not get split up. And also they liked the callbacks to the Digimon reference and, in, and also reminded them of season four. They love to see that Andromon helped out in the battle, kind of disappointed we didn't get Zudamon Mega Silhouette, but they did see Joe using the hammer with his crest glowing, and that was cool. And then we have Palmon finally got her hamburger. So that, yep, I liked last episode, which is a lot of nice things. Next we have Milton, who says the new ending theme is cute, and seeing the Digidestined in their pyjamas is also adorable. 
Yeah, would agree. Which I agree with. I, I liked it more this week. It definitely grew on me, but I do like the animations. The animations are always very cute. Next, we have Child Emperor, who says either Yamato is super strong or Takaru is extremely light, and that they doubt an 11 year old can just lift and hold an 8 year old up in the air, just like that. An 8 year old should feel pretty heavy to an 11 year old, then again, Takaru does look like he's 4 years old. Maybe he weighs just as much as a 4 year old. What do you seen think? Takaru's legs. Yeah, I mean, like, his head is the biggest part of his body. But also, I feel like I've seen kids lifting up younger kids before. Like, I feel like... I mean, like, it's when you're that... doable, but yeah, it would it would take some effort. Yeah, maybe Tai Chi... Uh, tai Chi, maybe uh, Yamato is just really, really strong. Then, lastly, we have Ritster, who says that... Or asks that, rather. Why did half of the group hang back in the beginning? Because it happens in, in Digimon. It happened this episode, yeah. too. Yeah, because we're trying to limit the number of voice actors we have to pay. And then they continue to say, We see that half went in and had eat hamburgers and fries, but none of them decided to go back and tell them, Yo, free food. Especially Tai Chi. He has a sister he needs to feed. Yeah, um, Tai Chi, I think, has a problem where he forgets that his sister exists whenever she's not on the screen, and it's the same with uh, their mother. That just Whenever sort of Hikari's happens. Whenever on screen, people should be saying, where is Hikari, but but they're not. But they don't, because they don't remember she exists. <laughs> like, I would be so on board if we just had a quick shot of what's ever happening in the real world, and we just have Taichi's mother just not knowing that she has children. She's just sitting there going, wow, I can't believe I never had children, yeah, or something please, like that. I'd be so on board for that. The world like... update should just be Taichi's mom watching the news and not commenting on either of them. Like, she thinks she's a Christmas cake. She's just like, well, my husband, I don't I don't seem to have a husband here. I don't seem to have children. I must be a Christmas cake. And she's going out partying. I don't know. I'd be, I'd be on board for that. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And of course, you can join us next time for when we cover episode 41, Mon Mon Park in the Fog. Do we have any predictions? Honestly, no. I, I didn't even watch the preview, so... I bet there's going to be fog. Yeah. I watched the preview, and I don't know what's going to happen in the next episode. I'm assuming it's a Takaru episode, which I'm actually kind of interested to see where we'll go with that. Like, will we get a silhouette of Angemon? Will we get a silhouette of Holy Angemon? Will we get a silhouette of any other Digimon he could evolve into? I don't know. Like, it just... I'm here for if it. We I'm get, interested are to we, find out. Yeah, like, it's actually kind of cool. Uh, also, there's some cool Digimon that appear to be showing up in the preview. Like, that's all I can really tell from the preview. Like, I don't know I will what's be going to happen. To see if at any point Pegasus Mon evolves or if we just get Angemon back first. Yeah. Well, the show has put Pegasus Mon as a question mark, question mark, question mark, but the Digivice toy put him as an armor level. So, hmm. I'd be really interested to see what we'll be doing. If, if we just, if we're going to get Angemon again in, or we're going to get a silhouette of Angemon or something, or if we're just not going to get a silhouette at all. It's a TK episode, but with no that would evolution be silhouette. Too, but I'd be surprised if we didn't get something. Yeah. I'm They're developing always kind the of mechanics hopeful. finally, so I feel like this is the place hmm. to do it. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm on board for this. Yeah. I don't, I, the Takaru episode that we last had, which was the Pegasus Mon one, I think we all rated very high. Like, overall, Soaring Hope, the Pegasus Mon mm -hmm. episode, is our top-rated episode. episode. Yeah. It was, like, Quinn and I both had it in second place, Evie had it in first place. It's our top-rating episode, so I hope it's as good as the, that episode because it's nice when we have good episode. It is nice when we enjoy talking about Digimon. Yeah. But this this episode, I, I enjoyed talking about this episode. The, the fruit one, even if it was a little bit too much, like, how much for are we committing this time? Mm -hmm. Any yep. other th any, any other predictions or thoughts? I don't think so. Alright, now let's see if I can read the outro without flubbing. So the link dump's linked in the description, and so is our Redbubble. You can contact us and stay updated. You can email us at lostintransnational.gmail.com to, you know, send us spam, or you can comment on this episode or message us on our website, which is lostintransnational.com. You can also follow us at Transnational on Twitter, and you can also find us on, at Lost in Translation on Tumblr, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We have a discussion thread on With the Will, and also we have one in the Digimon subreddit. We'd appreciate it if you could review us on any podcast catcher that you have, so iTunes or Apple Podcasts or whatever it's called now. If you can leave a review, leave it, and if I see it, which I hopefully would, uh, I will read it out in our questions slash postmon pat segment. You can donate to our Patreon, which is linked in the description, from as little as a dollar a month. That gets you access to a list of Discord server, 
but there are higher levels with more rewards such as notes, early episodes, raw episodes, and more. And thank you to our current supporters on Patreon, Joe, Stephen Rees, who's Wildling64 and Archive our own, Kaidawashi, Chisai, who you can follow on Twitter at Chisai236, Kyle, Lismet, who's a Lekmon on Tumblr, Nicholas, Metal Maimon, Sam, Anthony, Keith from Gone Will Hunting, our Hunter Hunter Rewatch podcast, Silverhead Freak 25, Magnus, Lucas, Blind Man, JCmon05, and Patrick. You can also make a one-off donation on PayPal, which we found linked in the description. It's paypal.me slash edgemon. Or you can also donate to my coffee account, ko-fi.com slash edra. I did not breathe the entire outro. I am very much out of breath, but I did it without flubbing, but I'm going to breathe now. That was impressive. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> I can breathe again. <sighs> okay, so... Thank you for joining me, my wonderful, lovely hosts, Quinn and Chloe. I pronounced Chloe and Chloe at the same time just then, so give me a round of applause for that. Uh, Quinn, where can we find you? Uh, you can look me up on the Twitters, at RealYubico, or you can show up to my class on Monday. If they did, imagine they did just show up and like, oh, Quinn, Quinn, we know you from the Digimen. So I, we love those I mentioned Digimans. in class once that I used to do a little bit of streaming and one of my students emailed me to be like, oh yeah, I actually like caught some of your old charity streams. I was like, oh, Aww. well that's wild. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's kind of nice. Yeah, it was fun. I like that. And Chloe, where can we find you? Uh, the main place people can find me, I guess, would just be on the Lost in Translation Mon Discord server. I try not to tweet, Yay! so don't look for me there. Yay! And also, I can't, you can't make, you can't say chitter, it's just Twitter, so. And I can't make Discord a ch pun either. Yeah. But uh, yes, of course, thank you both for joining me. And of course, we also have Evie, who you can all listen to us again. If you are not sick of our voice, you can listen to us on the Moncast, which is a Digimon and Pokemon podcast. And you can also, of course, follow Twitter on Twitter. Follow Twitter. Follow Evie on Twitter. There we are. I did my flub of the episode. And she is at Evie Padamon on Twitter. But of course, if you want to listen to our voices, we're also on the Moncast, which is at the Moncast on Twitter. So thank you both for joining me, and thank you y'all for listening, and we will see y'all in the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.